Today I'm talking about the controversy surrounding the death and events since of the passing of Ms Joni Lauer, known to wrestling fans around the world as China. There's been a couple of statements made by her mother and I want to give also my thoughts and my opinions on some of the stuff that's happened uh, over the course of, we're now talking over a year. Recently, we passed the first anniversary of her passing. Although there are different reports about when she sadly passed away, it's generally taken as the 20th of April. Her mother, Jan, has released a couple of statements via Pro Wrestling Sheets website and on Facebook uh, regarding what her thoughts on the situation are. And I also want to give my thoughts on my situation as uh, as well because this actually, well part of the story involves the local wrestling scene here in Dundee. First of all that statement on the Pro Wrestling Sheet website and as I said we recently passed the anniversary of her passing and Jan's mother released that statement on the Pro Wrestling Sheet website basically saying how angry she is regarding the release of a trailer that the producers uploaded on the anniversary of China's passing. She wasn't happy about that. She also wasn't happy that she wasn't consulted about the content of the trailer, especially some of the footage at the end of that trailer. For anyone who's seen the trailer, I'm not going to link to it on this video, but for those who have not seen it, at the end, you have her former manager, Anthony Anzaldo, and basically I don't care if I'm mispronouncing his name anymore. Uh, he, it looks like he is going into her apartment, and but the look of the trailer is that it looks like he's going in to find her dead. And one of the statements made by her mother, Jan, was that She'd been told by the director, I believe it was, of the documentary that he'd heard Anthony had filmed himself going into her apartment but claimed to have never seen that footage. Obviously something's up with that if that footage is put in the trailer. You can obviously see it's not Anthony uh, film, filming himself. Uh, by the looks of the trailer at the end, it's certainly somebody else filming it. Who it was, I don't know. So Jan was not happy that she was either she was neither consulted about the release of the trailer or its content. The trailer, uh, the, well, the documentary. For those who may not be aware, because this is something that's been in the works for such a long time. The documentary, and I'm not part of the documentary, this is a fan commenting and I'll talk about the rest, local wrestling scene and how it's involved in, in, in a few moments, but this documentary initially was called, with well, a working title as as the term goes, the working title that, which is what you call the documentary as you're working on it, it not, not is, it's not necessarily the final title of the documentary, but it was called The Reconstruction of China. What this documentary was supposed to be, it was supposed to be China with all of her experiences, personal problems, all her battles. It was supposed to be China trying to put her life back together, trying to move on, trying to move into a better place in her life. I don't know whether people have watched uh, the On the Razor's Edge documentary, it's now on the WWE Network, it was released on DVD about Scott Hall, but that is the kind of thing that uh, that she was aiming for, it's just like the um, the documentary that Dime Dallas Page did about Jake the Snake Roberts. That's the kind of thing that she was aiming for, and that was what the kind of thing that this documentary was supposed to be, it was supposed to be her being able to move on into a better place in her life, emotionally, physically, financially, you know, moving on and becoming, you know, a better person, becoming the person that I 
firmly believe she could have been. Now, the rest, local wrestling here in Scotland. That forms a little bit of part of the story. And here's where my opinion starts coming into this. Obviously, I'm talking in this entire video is all about my opinions as every video on YouTube that I do is. My sincere opinion on this, and it seems to bear uh, logic, I think it's truthful, it seems to me that Anthony Anzaldo, her former manager, is the entire villain of this piece. I don't want to make that sound like it's soap opera-esque, because we're not talking soap opera. We're not talking some fictional storyline in wrestling, we're not talking about some scripted reality thing. We're talking real life here. We're talking about someone genuinely passing away and I firmly believe that Anthony Anzaldo is the villain in this piece because it seems his behaviour has been absolutely disrespectful. And I'll talk more about what Jan has further said in the statement released a few days ago on Facebook in a moment, but here's where the local wrestling scene came, comes into it. The introduction you will have seen uh, going into this video uh, is a slow, mo slow motion video of China at the Caird Hall here in Dundee from August 2015. There she appeared for the local wrestling promotion Scottish Wrestling Entertainment. It was their Hell for Lycra show. The, kind of background a little bit to this as well. There was lots of rumours and reports that she was actually going to fly to the UK, not take part in the SWE show as scheduled and as advertised, but take part in the Celebrity Big Brother show. That turned out, obviously, not to be the case. And she appeared as scheduled at SWE's Hell for Lycra at the Caird Hall here in Dundee. Everybody thoroughly enjoyed the day. Uh, you know, when the news broke and even since of her passing, everybody has always commented how, not only how excited we were all to meet, to welcome her here to Dundee, but what a lovely lady she was, how wonderful, how nice she was uh, during her whole trip to Scotland when she met fans, how nice she was to the SWE roster, the staff there. Um, couldn't have, the appearance could not have gone better. She helped in her role in the in the show. Might well explain that her role in the show was between a match. Uh, now I should now call her Nikki Cross. Now in NXT, who faced uh, the Alpha Female, Alpha Female, the German wrestler and recently mixed martial artist. That they had a match where uh, I think it was Edith Summers was the referee for that match. China came in as kind of an enforcer when Nikki was up to her tricks and helped Alpha Female deliver a spear and the win uh, on uh, over Nikki Cross. And it was a spectacular moment. The fans wouldn't let her leave, demanded a speech from China and she said basically that's, that it was the start of her kind of goodwill tour, trying to, as I said earlier, move on and, and everything like that. So the appearance went well. Everything seemed to be fine. It was all left perfectly fine. A little while after that, however, her manager Anthony came back to SW, and I'm not entirely sure of the timeline because I'm not involved officially in SW. I just know the story from what they've said publicly through the the press um, to the fans on Facebook and everything like that. At some point, he came back and uh, made the allegation that SWE hadn't paid the agreed amount uh, and he demanded more money from him. In fact, some of the statements he made was very threatening towards SWE that uh, once he was finished, he wouldn't be able to run a puppet show, that you wouldn't be able to book any wrestler whatsoever, nobody would want to work with them. In my, to cut a long story short, in my opinion, the way the SWE do things and the way that certainly they've said and the way that they've talked to the press and been wide and open about this whole situation, even to the fans, I firmly believe that they did, in fact, pay the full amount. And it's my 100% opinion of that, that they definitely paid the full amount. Uh, I don't know whether Anthony did uh, tried that with anybody else, because I haven't really looked into that and I really haven't heard that reported, but certainly that seems odd behaviour from Anthony. 
who I met him shook his hand. I reiterated here on YouTube and in the podcast I I, I used to do. I kind of want to start doing again um, if I can. No, I I reiterated the statement that they were here that they were going to be at SWE. They were not going to be the Celebrity Big Brother show, uh, and it seemed fine. And like I said it, it, I don't know whether he did it to anyone else. It's such a shame he seemed an okay guy, but to come back suddenly demand money and threaten the SWE. Who I I said I thoroughly believe uh, that he paid uh, that they were paid. They paid the full amount to Anthony China. Who I didn't I believe Anthony was dealing with her uh, finances. So when China died, uh, you know, this is the sad situation, and this is the situation since. I'm uh, trying to kind of cut, some, some, cut this sh no, not too long. Jan released a statement a couple of days ago on Facebook. Now this is where I, I have become, and I've heard the stories like a lot of people have heard lots of the talk, opinions and allegations over the past year or so since she's passed away. It... His behaviour seems very strange to me. If, and I believe what John has put on Facebook, and I, I saw that through uh, David Lowe, the promoter of SWE, just him simply sharing the, uh, the statement that she put up. His behaviour has been very weird, and I, I certainly don't agree with the behaviour that he's uh, been... I don't know what to say exactly. Uh, well, how he's been behaving, I, I don't agree with that. Uh, she made a further statement on Facebook a couple of days ago, saying first of all, well, first of all, before I even talk about that statement, Jan has had to go, as everybody knows, and all of this can, is public record, you can search online for anything I'm saying, but Jan had to go to court and aggressively fight for control of her daughter's estate. Now what this seems to have done is kind of pushed Anthony into a little bit of action, and that, uh, as this, as Jan said on the Facebook post, that she asked, she could continue to ask for the last year, uh, for her her daughter's stuff basically. And just a couple of weeks ago, apparently he sent her some stuff, but a lot of the stuff was missing from the pictures and inventory that he sent her last July. Uh, she said there's. She hardly got any of the clothing. She believes that there's jewellery missing, that there's other certain items missing, including a cello, which apparently he gave away during the celebration. And, in fact, she says that on when she would try and communicate with him about those missing items, he stated that she could get the cello back over his dead body. Now, there's a lot more in the statement, basically saying that missings, uh, items are missing and he hasn't very been been very cooperative. Um, before the celebration last June he said that he was too busy to deal with it because he was dealing with the celebration. This whole situation, it really you know, doesn't make sense to me in so many ways. I am not aware of any legal paper or any kind of agreement, contr contract, whatever, for Anthony to be in charge of her state or still retain her stuff. Uh, I may be wrong, I'd say I'm not involved in this situation directly, but I have not heard about anything, I've not seen proof of anything put, posted online about him, uh, like China, agreeing that he should be in charge of her estate if anything happens to her. I think the right thing to do would have been when she passed away, and I would have done it, and I think most people would have done it, would have been to kind of simply step aside. There was no need, in my opinion, for her mother to go to the courts and have to aggressively, and I believe from what I read and lots of also wrestling news sites, there, there was some kind of pushback back from him, some reluctance uh, from his part at least to allow her mother to take charge of her estate, uh, of Joni's estate and that does not make any sense to me at all. Any person, any rightful honest person surely would 
in the absence, as I said, of any legal agreement, contract, uh, anything that China stated, if anything happens to me, you know, you can be in, you, you know, you'll be in charge of my estate. In the absence of anything like that, I think he was simply her manager, and he'd been fired apparently a few times, several weeks before her passing. Uh, and she, and according to the Facebook uh, post that John put up, she uh, had alleged, Joni had alleged that she believed that Anthony had stolen money off her, and that is, I believe, the general opinion. Like I said, threatening SWE, I don't know whether he did it to anyone else, and apparently there's been lots of reports that financially there's money missing. I, you know, anybody in the right, any honest person, decent person, I believe would have stepped aside as soon as she passed away. It wasn't as if Joni China didn't have contact with her family. It wasn't as if they were estranged. They, you know, it wasn't as if they had no contact or that she wanted nothing to do with them. She spoke to her mother. She spoke to her family. I, I get it. I don't know whether it be every member of the family, but certainly she spoke to her mother. She had a relationship with her family, so I think any decent person would have stepped aside immediately after her passing. Okay, you could be there, you can help, because if he was her manager, if he was actually doing his job, which I don't believe he was either, then he would have been able to say, well, okay, this is the current state of this, this and that. We had these appear any appearances made, any you know, money made, any money taken for future appearances, anything like that, any decent person would have at least, I mean, if the family didn't want that and just said, you step aside and we'll, we'll have our lawyers, accountants, whatever, take care of that, I think any decent person would have actually stepped aside immediately and allowed the family to take control of the estate immediately, signed everything over and let the family take care of the estate. And... It seemed obviously that's not happened and like I said, Jan had to aggressively pursue it through the courts to gain control of her daughter's estate with resistance from Anthony and it, this whole situation really concerns me. I don't think that uh, this situation is right. I, I seriously hope that the family can... Uh, uh, I don't know whether they need to continue to take legal action, it seems they may do, but I really hope that this situation when it comes to the family is sorted out pretty soon. You know, I've mentioned it once or twice, uh, and I don't want to keep mentioning it. I lost my father recently, and I, I know how upsetting, how uh, you know distressing it can be losing a family member uh, I've gone through it before with my grandparents, but, you know, I can't even begin to imagine how much more upsetting, how much more distressing it is for the family, for all of this to be in the public eye, for all of this to be, you know, to be made so public, to have this, all of this, you know, be... Like I, I, I've said, I've used the term before, satellite reported all over the world. And one website reports it, another website copies it, and another and another. For all of these details and everything to be in the public eye, I, I can't imagine how much more difficult, how much more distressing it makes the entire situation.